In this video, I'll be reviewing a really great Blender add-on for super easy and fast texture baking, and the add-on is called Oven. So the add-on creator contacted me and asked me if I wanted to try out the add-on and make a review video. So thank you for sending this over for me to review. And I will have an affiliate link in the description to the add-on on the Blender market. So if you're interested in purchasing the add-on, if you do purchase it through my affiliate link, then you'll be helping to support me and this YouTube channel. But I only recommend content to my audience, which I really stand behind. Now I do have texture baking tutorials on my YouTube channel where I show you how to use Blender's default baking tools to do texture baking, but those tools are really quite clunky and they're really hard to use, and there's a lot of hurdles you have to jump and issues you can run into. So this add-on is a total game changer for speeding up the process and making texture baking so much more easy and simple. So if you've purchased the add-on, you'll just need to download the zip file in the product files, and then don't extract the zip file, just leave it as a zip file. And you'll need to install the add-on in Blender. So in Blender, you're going to click on edit, you're going to go to the preferences, and then you're going to click on this install button. And then you'll just locate to the folder on your computer where you've saved the zip file. So I'll just click on the zip file and then I'll click on install add-on. And if you don't see it here, you can search for oven and you can just check mark the oven add-on. And then what you can also do is click on the save preferences button so that the add-on is always turned on in your future Blender project. And what's really cool is you can also set a default export path if you have a place that you want to export your textures to automatically. But I'm not going to be using this. There's also a few other settings here, but I'll just leave the settings on the default. So I'll close Blender's user preferences. So here's the file which I'm going to be using. So I have these different materials here, these procedural materials. So on this monkey head here, I have this procedural rough metal. I also have this procedural scratch metal. So I have two different materials on the same object, and I'll be using that as demonstration in this video. And then I also have this procedural caution stripes material on another object. And I have two different objects in my scene because I'm going to demonstrate how you can texture bake two different objects at once to speed up your workflow. And then also this object has two two different materials and I'll be baking these two different materials to one single texture map. So I'll press the N key to open up the side panel and I'm going to scroll down here. I have a lot of add-ons installed. I'm going to click on the oven one. So if you install the add-on, you'll see this oven tab on the end side panel. So I'm just going to go through and bake these objects. So the first thing that I need to do is UV unwrap the objects. So I'm going to click over here to go to the UV editing. And if I select the monkey head, go into edit mode, you can see the monkey head's already UV unwrapped on default. So I'll just leave that how it is. Now, if you don't know how to do UV unwrapping in Blender, you can check out my UV unwrapping for beginners tutorial. I'll have a link in the description to that tutorial. But you need to make sure that the objects are properly UV unwrapped and you need to make sure that the islands here are overlapping because if the islands are overlapping each other then there's going to be issues with the baking. And then also on this object here if I go into edit mode you can see I've just done a simple UV unwrap. So what I can now do is just make this smaller here and again I'll press the N key to open the side panel. So I'll scroll down here and I'm going to go to the oven add-on. And let me go into the render viewport mode so I can see this. Now what's also really important over here in the render properties, it's important that you change the rendering engine to cycles because EV doesn't support baking. Now if you are using Blender EV, you'll just need to change it to cycles and do the baking and then you can change it back to EV once you are finished with the texture baking. So what I want to do is click here to open up the objects and I'm going to click and drag to box select both of these objects and then I can click on the add button and it is going to add the objects which were selected. You can also click on them and then click on the remove button to get rid of them. And you can also just do one object if you want to, but for demonstration in this video, I'll be showing you how you can speed up your workflow by baking multiple objects as once. Now you can also do this source to target, and this is if you're baking high poly detail to a low poly mesh, which I'll be showing you later in this video. And you can check out the timestamps in the YouTube timeline if you want to jump to that, but I'm not going to be doing it right now. I'll be doing that later in the video. So those are the objects. So I'm now going to open up the PBR bakes, and these are all the maps that you can choose to bake. So the diffuse is the color map, so I'll choose diffuse. I'm also gonna choose metalness because that's the metallic map and these objects have metallic values. And I will choose the roughness and the normal. So those are what I'm gonna be using. I don't need any of the other ones. So I'll close the PBR maps and I can now open up the UV maps. Now this is gonna be the different UV map settings. So you can choose a different UV map. If for example, you wanna texture bake from one UV map to another UV map, which again, I'll be showing you how to do that later 
later in this video, but for now I'm just going to use the default UV unwrap with the objects. So we can just use the use active render and I'll close the UV maps. So now we can go to the export settings and we can choose a folder where we want the add-on to automatically save the textures. So I'll click on this file icon. So I'm just going to go into the folder with my blender file and I'll just go into this folder and then click on the accept button. And then here on the prefix, I could just type in like bake material or whatever you want to call it. I'll just call it baked material as the prefix. And then here on the extension, you could use like a JPEG if you want to, but for this, I'll just be using PNG. Now also this subfolders is a really cool feature. So if I turn on the subfolders, it's going to create a folder within this directory for the texture maps. And I especially want to use this because I have this object and this object, and they're going to be baked to different texture maps. So this way, this will be baked to different texture maps in its own folder. Folder, and then this will be baked to its own folder. So now here on the image dimensions, on the width and height, you can manually change this. However, you have these really convenient buttons here. So I'm just gonna turn this up to like 4K because I usually like to bake to 4K maps. And I can now open up the bake settings. So here on the device, I'm gonna be baking with my GPU because I have a GPU. But if you don't have a GPU or you just wanna bake to your CPU, you can use that. But I'm gonna use my GPU. And then also there's this denoise here, which I might as well just leave this on just so it will denoise it just in case there's any grain. Now on the samples here, you probably can really just change this to one for most things because it will bake faster. I'll just leave it set to 20, but you probably can really just change it to one for most things. And then there's also this island margin here or the bake margin. And if I go into edit mode here and go to the UV editing, that is going to add a bit of a margin here after the UV map. So for most things, 16 is probably going to be pretty fine. If you have some UV islands, which are very close to each other, like if these were very close to each other, the island margin of 16 might be a little bit too big. So you could turn it down maybe to like an eight, but for this 16 is going to work just fine. And then we also don't need to change the site bake influence. Now for the normal mode, you have OpenGL and DirectX, and this is going to depend on what 3D software you are using. So actually, if I hover over this, I just noticed this here in the video, if I hover over this, it's actually going to tell me what programs work best for the DirectX or the OpenGL. So it looks like Blender, Unity, Maya, and a few others use the OpenGL. I just use Blender. I really don't use any other softwares, any other 3D softwares. So I'm just going to keep this as OpenGL. So then always before I bake anything, I just like to press Control S to save the file, and then I will click on the bake button. Now, if you try to move Blender around, it's gonna appear as though it's crashed, but it really hasn't crashed. It's just baking the textures. So don't do anything. You don't need to click on anything. You can just wait till it finishes. All right, and it has finished baking. So then what you can do is you can click on this cool recreate materials button, and this will actually recreate the materials and it'll get rid of our procedural materials and add the new baked materials. So I'll just click on recreate materials. So I'm going to jump right over here to the shading workspace and you can see here's what the add-on has done. So you can see here's the normal. Let me just open this up, bring this down here. Here's the normal map and I have the node wrangler enabled. So I'll control shift and select the image to see it. So there's the normal. We also have the roughness map. And then we also have the metallic map and the diffuse map. So you can see the color space here is set to sRGB for the diffuse. And then the metallic and the roughness in the normal, those are all set to non-color, so that's correct. And it's also chosen the UV map on the object. So that is really great. And as well as that, it's also baked the two materials here to the same texture map, so that's great as well. And then I'm just gonna duplicate these objects and move them down, and I will just add the same material back, so the procedural material. So this one up here, this one has the baked textures, and then this one down here, that's the procedural material. And you can see they look exactly the same. And if I jump into my file browser, you can see the add-on automatically saved the texture maps to these folders. So here's the cube one, and we have the diffuse, and the metalness and the normal and the roughness. So that's the cube. And then also we have the Suzanne here and the Suzanne has the diffuse and the metalness and the normal and the roughness. So it's all baked that correctly and just saved it in your project files. So as you can see, this add-on really speeds up the baking process because really all you have to do is change a few of the settings on the side panel, hit the bake button. It quickly bakes out all the textures. It can bake out textures for multiple objects at once. And then it saves all the textures 
transforms and recreates them on your object. So the next thing that I'll show you is how to bake from one UV map to another UV map. Now a reason you might want to do this is this example here. So I have this cube and this cube has a fabric texture that I downloaded from Ambient CG. And if I go into edit mode, I scaled this UV map really big so that the fabric texture is smaller. However, you may not want the final UV map to be overlapping. You may want it to just be inside the texture space, but you can see I have to scale this up really big so that it is the right size for this texture. So what I can do is create a new UV map and then I can tell it to bake from this UV map to the new UV map using the add-on. So what you can do is click over here on the object data properties and make sure you have the object selected. I'm going to click on the plus here under the UV maps here. So click on plus. I can double click on this to rename it and I can call it baked UV. So now if I go into edit mode here, let's scroll right over here and this is on the UV editing. So this is the UV editor. Let's scroll over here and make sure that you are previewing the baked UV. So then I will press the A key to select all the mesh. I'll hit the U button and I'm going to do the smart UV project. And then here on the island margin, I'll maybe turn this like to a 0.003 so that there's a bit of space between the islands. I'll click on OK. So here's the UV editing. And just to make it a little bit different, just to show you, for example, I'll scale this down, maybe rotate it. Of course, normally you would want the UV maps to be as large as they can, but just for an example, I will kind of move these around, kind of scale them, something like that. So now let's go back to object mode and I'll hit the N key to open the side panel. And again, you can scroll down and go to the oven bake. So we'll go to the objects here. We'll add the new object, which is this cube. And then we can close the objects, go to the PBR bakes. And for this one, I'm gonna do the diffuse roughness and normal. Then we can open up the UV maps and this is the setting that we need to change. So what I can do is I can click on create new instead of use active render. If I were to use active render, it would use this one here, but this one is overlapping. And so I don't want that. So I'm gonna, on the UV map setting, click on create new. So now I can take the name here and I can copy this name, the baked UV, and I can paste it here in this name. So you can see this is the new one that I want to bake it to. If I go into edit mode, you can see the baked UV. That's the one that I want to bake it to. So here in the setting, I want to make sure it has the exact same name. And then the if this name exists, we're going to click on use. So this way we're telling the add-on that if there is a UV map which has this exact name, it's going to use this as the new UV map. And so we have that one right there on the object. Now, if you want to, this add-on will actually do the smart UV project automatically. So you can use these different settings here and not make this and just choose the override instead and it will actually create a uv map for you however i wanted to manually make my own uv map just to show you if you want to make your own custom uv map but if you don't want to you can just choose override and just create whatever name you want and you don't have to make your own uv map and the add-on will actually create a new uv map and it will use the smart uv project that's the settings so we'll just close the uv maps i can now go to the export settings I'm gonna choose a folder. I'll just choose the folder with my files and I'll click on accept. Here on the prefix, I'm gonna call this new UVs. I'll use a PNG extension and I can choose the subfolders. And then here on the image dimensions, again, I will turn this to a 4K texture. Here on the bake settings, I'll use my GPU again. I'll just leave the samples at 20 and I can just leave the island margin at 16 and then open GL. So now I can just click on the bake button and we'll just wait until this is finished. And it has finished baking. So then I'll click on the recreate materials and it will just recreate those materials. So now if I go into edit mode, you can see it's gonna actually change to the baked UV map. And you can see it's used our new UV map. So this one here, we don't actually need this one anymore. So I'll click on it and then click on the minus here just to get rid of it. So we're just gonna use the baked UV map. So here is the baked UV map. This is the normal, but I can also just do the new UVs diffuse. So here's the diffuse map. And if I go into edit mode, you can see it is correctly placed on the UVs. So that's great. And also if I go over here to the shading, you can see again, it's automatically set this up because we told it to automatically set up the material. So the next thing that I'm gonna show you is how to bake high poly details to a low poly mesh using the add-on. So I actually have a tutorial which I made somewhat recently on how you can do this with Blender's default baking tools, but the add-on makes it so much easier. And so in the video, I use this 
character head that I sculpted. And then I also have a tutorial on retopology for beginners, and I show you how to retopologize a face. So I have these objects on top of each other, and that is important. So let me just press Control Z, bring this back on top of each other. So here's the low poly one, and I already UV unwrapped it. And then here is the high poly sculpt. And so it is really important to UV unwrap the object just like you did before. So here on the UV editing, you always want to make sure that before you bake a texture, you UV unwrap it. So here is my UV unwrapped texture for the low poly face. So let's press the N key to open the side panel. I can go back to object mode and I'll scroll down here and again, go to the oven add on. So here on the object, I actually want to choose the high poly object. So here on the high poly, click on this and then you want to click on add. So I've renamed these objects just to keep it very simple so it's easy for you to see what I'm doing. So here's the high poly object and then here's the low poly object. We're now gonna check mark the source to target. And then here on the target, you can click on this and you wanna choose the low poly. So the source is gonna be the low poly, the object is gonna be the high poly. And then there is an extrusion here, and this is really important because you can see there are some spots where the high poly is kind of overlapping through the low poly. So it is important that you have some extrusion, but I'm just gonna leave it at the default of 0.02. That's gonna work fine for most objects. If you have a really big extrusion, then you might need to turn it up, but I'll just leave it how it is on default. So I can now just go through the other settings. So I'll go to PBR bakes. And for this, because I'm baking a normal map, I'm baking the high poly details to a low poly mesh. I'm gonna turn off the diffuse and I'm just gonna turn on the normal. For the UV maps, that's fine. We'll just use the UV map that we already created. And then here on the export settings, again, I will choose a folder and I'll just save this in the project files and I'll click on accept. On the prefect here, I'll just call it high to low. I'll just save it as a PNG image. And again, I will change this to a 4K texture. I won't use the channel packaging. Here is the bake settings. I'll just keep the default settings how they are, but again, you probably could just turn the samples down to one for most things. And I will save this again with Control S, and then I'll click on Bake Source to Target. And it has finished, so now I'm gonna click on Recreate Material, so it recreates the material. So now I'll just move this over here. And if I go into edit mode, you can see here's the UV map. So let's just go over here, just scroll over. We'll click on this and we're gonna click on the high to low normal. And if I go back to object mode now, you can see here it is. So here is the baked map. That all looks great. I don't really see any issues with that. And also right over here on my file browser, just like it did for the other ones, you can see it saved this to my computer where I told it to export it. So let me just hold down the Z button, go into the material preview so you can see it. So here is the low poly object, and you can see if I go back to solid view, this is how it looks right now. So it's really low poly, it doesn't look that high quality. But if I go into the material preview, you can see there's all the details there from the normal map. So here's the high poly one, and here's the low poly one, and you can see they have pretty much the same exact details, except this object is much lower poly. Now there's one more cool thing I wanna show you with this add-on, and that is that you can just bake a single texture. So I have a cube here, and if I go to the add menu here in the shader editor, I'm just gonna add a noise texture, I can preview the noise texture and I'll just like turn the scale up and the detail up and maybe the roughness a bit. So let's say that I just wanna texture bake this noise texture. Well, first of all, just like all of the other texture baking process, you need to make sure here in the UV editor, you need to make sure that you UV unwrap the object. I'll go back here to the shading and I now just wanna bake this texture. Now, if you select the noise texture, and then press the N key to open up the side panel here in the shader editor. You can click on the node tab and there's gonna be settings for that node. So make sure you have it selected. So first you can choose what socket you want it to bake to. So it can bake the color map or the factor. I'll just change it as factor. Again, you can also choose a UV map. I'm just gonna use the default UV unwrap of this object. And then again, you can choose a folder to save it. So I'll just save it somewhere on my computer in my project files, and I will click on accept. Then you can also choose between the sRGB and non-color. So if you were baking some kind of texture that you wanted to plug maybe into the roughness or the normal, you'd want to use non-color, but I'll just use sRGB for the color. I'm also going to use PNG as the extension. And then again, I will bake to 4K. So you can save this project again, and then click on bake noise texture. And we'll just wait for this to finish. It usually does 
doesn't take that long. And here it is, it's finished, so I'll just open this up, and it's also saved it to my computer. In my file browser, here is the baked texture, so it's used the UV map and baked just that noise texture. So that is how you use the oven texture baking add-on for Blender. So it's a really great Blender add-on, it really speeds up the process, and it's so easy to use. And I really like the user interface, it's just really simple and super easy to use. So I can highly recommend this add-on for anyone doing texture baking in Blender, and if you'd like to purchase the add-on, then you can use my affiliate link in the description, and if you purchase the add-on through my affiliate link, then I'll earn a small commission, so that's also a great way to help support me and this channel. So I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you found it helpful, and thank you for watching.